Let's talk about U.S. border security, insecurity in Mexico. We heard a lot about the violence in Mexico the past couple of weeks. And one of the big stories for us on our side, a heart-wrenching story from Brownsville, two U.S. veterans. They had family in Matamoros. They went, the reports say they went into Mexico to see family, and they haven't been seen for almost two weeks now, and I know the effort continues to try to turn up something. Now joining us on 710 KURV, Brownsville, Congressman Filamon Vela. Congressman, thanks for giving us a few minutes this morning. First off, Osorio, Osorio Chung, the chief of security for Mexico. I guess he's the equivalent to the DHS chief for, for Washington. Osorio Chung was over here in the, on the border uh, this past week in, in Reynosa. And I know you had a chance to fire off a letter over to him. What were you communicating to Osorio Chong? Well, back in January, the president of Mexico, Peña Nieto, came uh, to Washington and met with the folks at the White House. And back then we um, wrote a letter to Vice President Biden asking him to bring up the issue of violence in Matamoros and Reynosa, um, and specifically to um, you know, talk to the president of Mexico with respect to his uh, proposals for uh, secure economic zones in Oaxaca, Chiapas, and Guerrero. And, uh, you know, I was proposing if, if, if they're implementing those sorts of things in southern Mexico, why not do it here on the northern border? And, of course, you know, weeks go by, and we um, you know, are now experiencing this latest uh, flare-up. And, um, you know, you know, countless people have died, and, and we have, uh, you know, two of our veterans that are missing. And um, Osorio Chong made a trip to Matamoros the uh, day before yesterday, and I thought I had uh, friends in Brownsville who, you know, who live and work on both sides of the border who uh, were going to that meeting, and I thought, well, it made sense to, um, you know, one, ask Osorio Chong to... Um, do what, see what they could do about getting information with respect to uh, the, the two gentlemen whose families live in Brownsville were um, killed in the last six months. Um, the, the Alvarado brothers and sister, uh, who we lost here two or three months ago, and then, of course, uh, to see what we could find out about our two missing veterans. And at the same time, to you know once again urge um, that they begin to look at um, doing in Matamoros and Reynosa what they thought about doing in southern Mexico. Was there a reply from Osorio Chong's office to you? Uh, we, we've not had a reply yet. Um, I am at, I'm coming home today, fortunately, because it's 23 degrees over here. Hmm. Um, and tomorrow I'm going to be meeting with um, the, the my, my friends who are you know, Matamoros businessmen um, to see how that went. I haven't had a chance to talk to them about it yet. What can you share in any effort? To, on, on, the, on the U.S. side, frankly, we always feel so impotent in trying to do anything because Mexico is Mexico, and you know that's, that's their land, and we have no say whatsoever that can, of what can happen over there. Is, what, what can you share with us, if anything, about an effort, a continued effort to try to find Ernesto and his brother Jesus Garcia, these uh, veterans? Uh, uh, I can tell you that um, uh, we've been in contact with the Mexican, with the, the American Embassy in Mexico City, and that all of our um, uh, all of our law enforcement agencies uh, that can help um, are very, very actively um, trying to get information with regard to uh, uh, Mr. The, the, the two Mr. Garcias. For folks not familiar with the story, Ernesto and Jesus Garcia, it was it was almost two weeks ago. This coming Monday will be two weeks that they've been missing. Uh, they went to see their grandma in Matamoros. They came back early Monday morning around 2 a.m. And final text message, I love you to the kids and hi to his wife. That was Ernesto. And that's it. They have disappeared. And I can tell you firsthand, not a single call has come in. At least that's the account from... Ernesto's wife, to date, as of yesterday afternoon, not a single call has come in from Mexico. Anyone asking for anything whatsoever, it's complete silence. Joining us on 710K URV is Brownsville Congressman Filamon Vela. Congressman Tim Sullivan here. Good morning to you. Good morning, Tim. And what 
Uh, I mean, what are you hearing? Are, are you hearing any willingness from the Peña Nieto administration as to, you know, try to push this investigation to the forefront, or will they let it linger like so many others? I have not heard anything with in regard to this specific investigation. Um, and I think with respect to the overall situation of violence, uh, in Matamoros and Reynosa, um, up until now, the administration uh, has been largely silent. However, I can tell you that this has been, um, uh, in, in some ways, a, a very disturbing week, given uh, the extent of the outbreaks in Matamoros and Reynosa this yes. week, and of course, um, you know, the seriousness of having two of our veterans missing. And, um, you know, I was assured yesterday evening, I have um, uh, Steny Hoyer is our uh, the Democratic minority whip, and his office, along with mine, are actively engaged in making sure that the highest levels of our administration um, are involved in this. And, and I, I, I was assured yesterday um, through um, whip Hoyer that, uh, the vice president's attention is, is on this. So, you know, this is a developing story. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's a humanitarian aspect to this as well, because, yeah. you know, not only do we have two missing veterans, but uh, Sergio was mentioning, and he knows firsthand um, because he's spoken uh, to, to Mrs. Garcia, um, you know, they, they, she's got three minor kids that she's taken care of. So um, uh, for, for now, uh, we are uh, trying to work on a. My, my wife is actually trying to work on a framework um, so that we can set something up to help Mrs. Garcia and the family. Oh, okay. Um, you know, while they're waiting for news, um, and, and they're going to be working on that today. As soon as I get more information about that, we'll relay that to Sergio. Um, but from the from the standpoint of the investigation and and and, and the whereabouts of the two veterans. Um, I, I can tell you that I, I, I'm confident that, that our law enforcement officials, um, given the jurisdictional restraints that they may have, are doing everything they can um, to, 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 to figure out what has happened. What are they doing different in southern Mexico, Congressman, in Guerrero and other parts of, of Mexico? What are they doing different down there that the Mexican government should be doing here? Because you know how they made this big fanfare of, of splitting up Tamaulipas into several military-style segments where they would be doing patrols and uh, those areas would be managed by by ex-military individuals. And and they really... And you wonder if that's working, yeah, considering really the uptick in exactly. violence we've was, seen the last couple of yes, weeks. Yes, sir, I was going to go there. Well, um, uh, th those are good questions and questions I've uh, raised myself. Um, you know, given those announcements, it was three, you know, three to six months ago. Uh, from what I can tell, uh, that's all they were was just announcements, and, and um, I, I have not yet seen any information that leads me to believe that um, that there that there was an effective implementation of those zones. Never mind, um, you know the the um, the presence of federal law of, of federal law enforcement officials that you know to the level that we would need to contain these situations. You got to remember we. We've been through this before in Ciudad Juarez and Tijuana, um, you know, because in the last five to 15 years, uh, I think we all remember how things, how difficult things were yeah. uh, in, in those places. And in, uh, history teaches us that in Ciudad Juarez, and, and as of today, although things aren't perfect, you have people that had moved to El Paso, El, pa El Paso that are now repatriating. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they... they uh, the federal government in Mexico sent in anywhere between three to 5,000 uh, very well-trained troops. Um, and, and by all accounts, it did some good. There, there comes, it becomes a question of where, what kind of federal resources do they have. And, um, and, and I might know, Congressman, I'm, yeah, that was a different administration that concentrated on that one as well. You know, that was before. Uh, that, that, that's, that, that's true, yeah. too. Congressman, listen, we'll leave it at that, and hopefully we'll get an update from you in, in a few days. That's Congressman Philemon Villa of Brownsville joining us on 710 KURV.